Hey amazing hackers, I'm Tor Hat from HM Cyber Academy. <coughs> this time we are trying to exploit time sensitive vulnerabilities in race conditions. So this is the fifth lab. So this has a little bit complexity but I'm gonna simplify it for you. Okay. So this lab contains password reset mechanism. Although it doesn't contain a race condition, you can exploit the mechanism's broken cryptography. Hmm by sending carefully timed request okay so to solve this lab identify the vulnerability obtain a valid password reset token log into carlos access the admin panel and delete carlos hmm. okay we have a user here which we can use let's try to access the lab okay what do we have here hmm. okay let's log in Biner peter so we have nothing inside the application okay so we have to log out okay so we have to log out we have to click on my account and you have to click on this particular forgot password okay so by clicking this you have to enter an email address or username so we know the username this one right so let's submit it and let's see what happens so please check your email for reset password link so this will be our email client okay so let's click this and just as promised we got a password reset link okay so what does this password reset link actually contain okay so this endpoint which is forgot password and user winner and token equals to something okay so this is the token that we got hmm interesting let's go to burp suite and let's see what we got actually burp proxy and as you can see this is the post request and uh, this is the get request hmm interesting so do you understand the request uh, methods like why post request and get request is usually we do not send any kind of data in get request okay as you can see the parameters are empty but in post request we send some form of data okay so in this particular case we send this particular username and csrf token we send these two things okay so in get request what do we get okay if i scroll down i get nothing okay so i'm not getting anything except this particular session id okay so what we can do is we can send both of them to repeater for testing okay although we need only one of them so we will send both of them okay so this is post request and this is get request okay if i send this request what are the things that we are getting so in the header we are not getting anything and this is the document which is a html page we get something called a csrf token okay so this is the token we get when we are using get request so we do not have any kind of csrf token here okay so when we send something that we don't have we get something that we don't have okay so as simple as that so if i try to remove this php session id so what's going to happen okay so i should get a php session id here right let's see if it is right okay so sending this as you can see we got php session id here okay so we can use this particular thing whenever we want okay right so let's go to post request and as you can see we have a php session id we have a csrf token okay we have all all of these things okay right and what we can do is to test the race condition we need at least more than one of the request okay so let's make a duplicate out of this okay so this is post right so what we can do is we can create a group with the, both the post request okay so what we can do is we can send this particular group as parallel okay so let's see what happens okay 
sending the group so it is taking lot of time right so let's see both the request so did we get anything different the only difference that we can see is this time right so this is like 900 milliseconds and this is only like 600 milliseconds what we can infer from this is this request came faster okay this request came slower which means they are going in sequential order they are not going in parallel so the main reason why they are going in sequence what is because of this particular session id and csrf token okay so this is the main reason why why they are doing uh, in sequential order okay so what we can do is we can get a new csrf token and a new php session id and keep one of them okay not both of them but only one of them okay we are telling server that both the request came from different sources okay so this particular php session id is different and which means this is a different user and this is a different user so that is what we want to tell the server okay so let's get a new php session id and csrf token so it is easy right you delete the php session id in get request and if you send it you get a new php session id okay i'm gonna get it again okay we got something here so just copy this one let's go to post 2 this time okay replace this and let's get the csrf token as well okay so this is the csrf token control c get to post 2 control v as per our theory we should get both the request at the same time right so let's send them in parallel and see if our theory is correct so this one is 600 milliseconds and uh, let's see this one so this one is also exactly the same time actually that is quite interesting so which means now the, both the requests are going in parallel so this is exactly what we wanted so the main part is did we get the race condition okay by race condition what we mean is so both of them should have same token okay same reset token which will be displayed in the email address right so if i just reload this i can see that previous emails so this one is like our first email okay single post request okay so next time what we did is we sent two requests at the same time but uh, one of them is like uh, 600 milliseconds and second one is like 900 milliseconds okay so in that case what happened is it received two different tokens so next time we identified it and we rectified it and uh, we sent both the requests at the same time so let's see this time what happened so this time as you can see both have the same token okay which is quite interesting so this tells us that there is a race condition in this particular case right so what we can do is we can exploit this by sending two different users okay say something like uh, one is wiener user and one is carlos user okay so what's going to happen then so what's going to happen is during the generation of the token both are at the same place okay like a uh, same race window so what happens is both of them receive same token so we will have carlos's token and wiener's token as same okay so when we get same token what we can do is we can simply use the token and we get the solution okay so it is as simple as that so i just changed the username to carlos which means that uh, this carlos is sending this particular request and this one is sent by wiener user okay so what we are essentially doing is we are creating two users that want to reach the server at the same time and uh, both will generate same token just like we did before okay so we can only get one of the request back to us and we can use that particular token to change carlos's password okay so that's what we want to do right 
So let's send this and let's see what happens. In the email client, what's going to happen? We are only going to get one email, which is Wiener's email, which has a user Wiener. So this is quite expected, right? So what we will do is we will not click this one. Okay, if we click this one, the token is already used. So we don't want to click this one. Okay, we'll just copy this. We'll just paste it here. Change the Wiener to Carlos and we will send it. Okay, so just as expected, we have different token for each one. Okay, we will again send both of these requests few more times. So I'm sending this. Okay, 640 milliseconds. Just reload. We have a new token. Copy, paste, change it to Carlos. Hit enter. As you can see, we got into a place where we can use new passwords. Okay. So you understand the concept, right? Depending on the timed request. Okay. So we get same token for both Carlos and Wiener. So while using this reset token, we are able to exploit this one, right? Let's set a new, which is uh, HM Cyber Academy. Okay. And uh, HM Cyber Academy. Right. And uh, let's submit. Okay. Uh, let's go to my account. Let's go to Carlos and uh, HM Cyber Academy and hit login and boom. Okay, so we got admin panel here. Let's click on it and delete Carlos. All right, we're done. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next one.